somewhere I'm supposed to have some notes here. <laughs> These are the President Biden's notes. Why don't you just deliver mine? Why don't I just give your speech here? <laughs> and you can give mine. I'm very grateful to President Biden for many things, but I thank him for asking me back to the White House to celebrate 30 years of the Family and Medical Leave Act. And as you showed by your enthusiastic response to the Vice President's remarks, what the Family and Medical Leave Act should tell us about our common future. The bill was the result of years of passionate advocacy and effort by so many people, none more than my friend of more years than we'd like to admit, <laughs> Chris Dodd. So before I started running for president, I, I, I was a governor, but I was very interested in this issue, and I kept knowing that Dodd introduces this bill every year. <laughs> and he introduced it for six years, I think, before it passed. So he passed it, it got vetoed. And then he passed it again, and it got vetoed again. And uh, by the time I started running for president, I basically made it a part of my stump speech because I thought it both embodied what was wrong then by the polarized politics of Washington and embodied the hazards of overlooking the country when it's changed on the ground. What do I mean by that? The president and I and Nancy and Chris and all of us who are, dare I say it, 75 or older, we grew up in a different time. <laughs> we, we grew up in a different time. My mother always worked, and my grandmother did, but they were atypical. By the time the 1992 election unfolded, there were more and more families where both the mother and the father had to work to make a living, or where there was only one parent in the home with the children. In a situation like that, both the society and its political leaders look utterly hypocritical if they say, oh, there's nothing more important than raising children. Well, how about a little help to do it? Well, we can't do that. <laughs> and so the rest of us followed the lead of Senator Dodd and the others in the Senate, and there were Republicans, too, that were for it. That was a different time. There were more than 200 women's, children, labor, and faith organizations led by the National Partnership for Women and Families. There were, If you ever feel drifting, just ask Judy Lickman what you should do. She'll tell you. <laughs> there were all these people in the business community who were progressive. They implemented their own forms of family lead because they realized it was good for morale, for productivity, for the long-term health of the business. Still, it took eight years, two vetoes, and another election before it became law. But today, one of the most important things we can do 
is to remember that the Family Leave Act and every other thing that has really fundamentally changed this country that moved through Congress is an embodiment of what I learned from the World War I essay of the great German sociologist Max Weber, who said that politics was the strong and slow boring of hard boards. All these people board the hard boards, and we are the beneficiaries, and we should all be grateful. And <laughs> I kept saying that all the time when people wondered why, when the president took office, we didn't have <laughs> the infrastructure bill. <laughs> The CHIPS Act, the inflation, the anti-inflation act, and the, all the climate change stuff in 15 minutes. <laughs> and one of the reasons I was so happy when he got elected president is I watched him spend 15 years, if that's what it took, to make the changes that we needed to make this country a better place to live. So I think we should remember that. I also think you should know, a lot of, and Chris Dodd will tell you the same thing. After all these years, I still have more people mention the family leave back to me than any other specific things I did. And no one ever talks about what gets all the press coverage, you know, the political process. How long did it take? Who got derailed? What went up? What went down? Nobody. They tell you their story. That's when you know, for good or ill, that we have united the country. And my job is to introduce a storyteller. So I will tell you my story and the point of her story. First time I ever got on an airplane after I left the Oval Office. Boy, what a bummer. <laughs> Somebody said, when do you really know you're not president anymore? <laughs> they don't play a song when you walk in a room. <laughs> and you're back on commercial air travel. <laughs> so I'm taking the shuttle from New York to Washington. And it's really a compelling flight attendant with a very intense stare looked at me and she said, may I talk to you? And I said, sure. She said, you know, my husband loves you. He's a jazz musician and he teaches music in school. So he was always for you. She said, but I really didn't care about you one way or the other <laughs> until the Family Medical Leave Act. She said, I have, a, I have a sister and we had the misfortune that both our parents were dying at once. One with cancer, one with advanced Alzheimer's. There's no way we could support them with care, except because of the Family and Medical Leave Act. And I just wanted to tell you this. She said, I've heard all these politicians give speeches about family values. She said, I know how your families, how your parents die is an important family value. It was breathtaking. I never get on a shuttle after 20 years that I don't think about that woman. And then there's one other story. I, one an early Sunday morning, I took a one out of the White House. I came back. I needed to go up and shower and dress, and Hillary and I were going to church. And I got there, and there was a young person at the White House giving a tour to a man and his daughter. She was obviously very ill. And I said, would you excuse me, because I'd really like to welcome you properly, but I need to go clean up and get dressed. And I had her taken to the White to the Oval Office. So I went up, took a shower, came down, went in the Oval Office, you know, gave a little standard two or three sentence to her and, and took a picture. And then I was walking them back out onto the South Lawn. And when the daughter walked out with the guide, 
he grabbed me by the elbow and I turned around he had big tears in his eyes and he said you know my little girl's not going to make it much longer but he said because of the family and medical leave act these months I have spent with her are by far the most important time of my life and he said I am telling you this because I read all this stuff, I know what all the controversies are. He said, it is so easy for you up here to forget that what you do affects the lives of other people in ways you cannot imagine. I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't been able to share this time with my daughter. Now, we're here first to celebrate the fact that now about 400 million times in the last 30 years, Americans have taken advantage of the Family and Medical Leave Act. And, we're here because in spite of that, And in spite of the 2020 study that the Department of Labor did, finding that 95% of employers said that the Family and Medical Leave Act either didn't hurt or actually helped productivity, tur reduce turnover, and increase morale, there's still a lot of problems that cannot be solved without some form of paid leave. And I... We, we tried. We tried to at least get permission to use surplus unemployment insurance funds by state in the late 90s, and there was a lot of opposition to that. So people acted like, you know, once again the free enterprise system would collapse if we actually gave people a chance to take care of their sick relatives or be there when a baby was born or when there was some other terrible problem. So we need more stories. Not process, stories. People need to understand that as great as this was, there's still a lot of people left out. That's the real purpose of today. So one of the stories you haven't heard is Natasha Jackson's, and she's a pretty good storyteller. <laughs> so I ask you to welcome her to the stage.